So what are some ways people in general can support families who have special needs children? Um, I think it's a fine line um, sometimes between um, trying to be too involved and, and I think it's, it's different for, for every parent, for every situation and I, I wasn't ready for people um, to be in my life um, initially um, because I was just just trying to cope with my own emotions and I didn't want to I didn't want to lose it in front of, of people that I didn't really know um, so I think I think you I think you have to be careful about how much um, help you give um, as people are coming to terms with it but I think there are some really um, it, practical ways too that we can help and I think one of them is it, for me to come to church was was really was really difficult because I I had you know in those early years I had two they were just a year apart um, and I was always worried about Jenna um, catching colds or, or, or different things because still there's there's those medical issues so you know I, I didn't want people fussing around Jenna I didn't want um, you know people touching her getting in her face um, a, any of those things that we just kind of automatically do with babies or children um, so so that was hard in it and it made me want to um, put a little cocoon around her and and kind of keep her safe um, I didn't and it's hard too because um, you're getting diagnosis diagnoses as, as you go along you know especially initially and so there's just some you know people are always wanting to know how things are going and 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 that's hard it's good and it's hard so um, it's just one of those things that is kind of hard to navigate I, I'm not really I'm not really sure how to how to help out there um, the other the other thing that I think is helpful too is that when we when we are at church I, I didn't get to go to services if because I needed to stay with with Jenna and and help her and, and play with her um, so you know there were there were some people initially that were really good when I when I finally put her into the nursery um, you know our, our nursery director really took that on as her own and and was great with Jenna and just let me feel at peace to be able to go and and the other part about that is because it's just once a week um, you know she made contact with us during the week um, and to, to build that relationship with with Jenna and and with the girls and that was just huge that was that was great because it meant that there wasn't a great trauma when I dropped her off you know from week to week so that was that was a great way to start invite to have somebody join in to life with us um, and and to be really helpful at, at church um, and I think some other things oh as as they got older and we moved out of the nursery system we were at a point where we didn't have other people that would that would come and and help out so that's when I really started to to miss church um, services because in order for her to participate in a, in a Sunday school class, um, I, I needed to be there. And so just trying to find somebody who was willing to learn and willing to feel comfortable. And there were some couple of teenagers that were really amazing um, at that and, and took the time to come and, and get to know the girls. And then we had them for babysitters. And so, then they were willing to take on Sundays uh, or Saturday nights when we were at church. So that, that was good. So that that's critical. I, I mean, you just people just don't get to go to church if they have a special needs child. You, you just don't. And if you don't have that, if you don't feel comfortable leaving your children at a church, um, if if your kids don't feel comfortable when they're there, then with the people that they're with, then 
you just miss out. You miss out on 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 a church service, which is critical to just even getting through your week, and um, and then it spirals down um, for you for for me, you know, spiritually and emotionally. Um, so so I think if there's a support to be had, it's in helping it's helping parents of special needs kids um, have time to go to church to get spiritually revived again. Hi, I'm Terry, and uh, we parent together, mm -hmm. and uh, so we just want to chat a little bit about what it means uh, for us, and I think typically in special needs families, it usually is the mom who bears the brunt of the uh, extra work and the, the burden, um, uh, particularly if, if one person works outside the home and one person works uh, inside the home. So one of the things that we were asked is how it affects us as a couple and the difference. And, um, you know, I think it's like anything. It uh, draws you together in new ways and it forces you to uh, kind of pare away all the extraneous things in life and look at what is really important and what is necessary and you know there's a whole series of, of grievings that goes on when you have a child that doesn't kind of match society's norm or your expectations and you know oh, how we're going to do Disneyland and how we're going to have trips and going to the beach is uh, not a fun time it's a it's a workout and as Chantel said play is is more work and so the relaxing times or the fun times as a family are a lot more uh, challenging mm -hmm. um, you know I often say when I work with young couples is uh, the important any important thing is to know that any two people can kind of go and have fun together but when life falls apart and there is suffering because you said in this world you will have trouble who is it that you want by your side to walk with you through troubles because you need someone who is stable and solid and consistent and that you can count on and that you understand and uh, uh, is is going to be loyal to one another to the task. So it does uh, draw you together. Uh, it does create its own challenges too because you, just as in any parent, you parent differently and you have to kind of you parent from your backgrounds and you parent from where you're used to. and. Uh, trying to uh, come up with new determinations and new baselines and understandings with a different uh, parenting situation when you have no background because there's no rules and each especially as child is is kind of different so it it forces kind of a different kind and level of communication to try to sort things out or understand um, each other yeah and I think you know even because we grieved so differently, um, you know, I think it created things that, I, in hindsight, I can see, and, and there's a reason why lots of, you know, families with special needs kids have a hard time making it, because you you do, it, there there is that grief process, and boy, if if you don't recognize the direction that you're going um, and and retract because I think there were you know there were moments when um, in those early those early years um, when Jenna was just a baby that I I can see now um, I really struggled I think I really struggled with I don't know if it was depression but I think it was something akin to that and so it made it really difficult for for us to always um, to stay connected, and um, and it's just it's just been you know I, it gets better and better and better um, because we can we can talk about it better now, and I understand what's happening, and I have a little bit of a little bit more space, you know I think to. To spend more time with God and to and to think about it, and I and that has been incredibly helpful. And Terry has been a rock through everything. He's totally stable, totally, you know, always, always there, always ready to talk and and understand 
and uh, and and understand that we have three dramatic girls, but we also have an emotional dramatic mother at times too. So, so just that has been so good, just to be able to to walk through those hard um, days where we I did feel isolated, and and Terry was really the the, the only person. Um, besides my mom, that really held me together. I think it just magnifies the difficult challenge that parents have. I think when people have children, their natural tendency is to pour all their emotional energy and effort into the child, and you know, to the neglect of the 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 marriage relationship. I think that's kind of typical or a challenge that couples have. But this is just magnified because the needs of the child are so much more diverse and the the physical time I mean they don't always sleep as well they're fussy you're doing therapy you're not playing so it just increases the the emotional attachments that happen to the child to to so much of the challenge of kind of keeping that as a couple so just having to yeah. kind of work through that or talk through that yeah